I'm Carlin Ross, and I'm here with Laura Bogish. Hi. And we're going to talk about fantasy. So orgasm is about arousal. What is that blood flow? And so when we touch ourselves with our hands, increased blood flow. Mm -hmm. When we use a vibrator, increased blood flow. And when we have a dirty thought, <laughs> right, increased blood flow. So Laura, are there any wrong fantasies? Absolutely not. Uh, I think that we've confused having a fantasy with actually wanting to do that fantasy. And that is not the case. A fantasy is just a thought or an image that sends blood flow to our genitals. It's automatic. We don't have control over it. So any thought that we have is perfectly normal and natural, even if it doesn't fit societal guidelines. And we think that's what we're supposed to be thinking about <laughs> sex. So yeah, just send the thought police away because... <laughs> that was one of my favorite Betty lines. Whenever mm -hmm. we were doing workshops and women, we have a lot of guilt about our fantasies because mm -hmm. um, we fantasize about things like rape. We fantasize about bestiality. We fantasize about inappropriate partners. We fantasize outside our orientation. Mm -hmm. And Betty would say there are no thought police. Yeah. Taboo is arousing. I mean, you know, that's course. true for everybody. So of course we're going to think about things like those thoughts are going to come up and then we want to squash that thought down because we're our own thought police and uh, we find it inappropriate that like, you know, we think like, oh no, if I have that thought, that must mean subconsciously I want to do it. I would never want to do 80% of my fantasies. Oh no. Oh no. Because then it's not a fantasy. The whole point is that it's taboo. It's something mm -hmm. I don't do in my everyday life. And that's why I get a little jolt. And Betty said that at the end of her life, if anyone knew what she was fantasizing about, she would be jailed because at 91, you really have to get the blood flow going. Yeah, I have a I have a very dirty mind for sure. So I can really relate to that. And I think for me, what helped me develop comfort in my fantasies mm -hmm. was permission. And I was a teenager in I think it was 1973 when Nancy Friday's book came out, uh, My Secret Garden. And it was just lying around the house and I read it and it was all about giving permission for fantasy. And I think that started, that's where my very dirty mind is rooted, rooted because nothing is off the table for me. Well, you can get that book on Amazon. And when Nancy Friday released that book, basically it's a collection of women's fantasies that um, she requested women to write in. And you see, it's pretty raunchy. Yes. And there's some extreme things in there. And at that time, the prevailing belief was that women were incapable of sexual fantasy. So it was a, a groundbreaking moment. And she took a lot of heat for it. I always think of Nancy Friday and, and Betty kind of leading the sex positive feminist movement. Mm -hmm. So you can pick up that book and it's like fantasy is creativity. Yes, and yes. Very often women would take workshops and they would say, you know, I don't fantasize. I don't know how. I've never done it. And Betty would say, well, you know, you put together an outfit. It's creating an image in your mind of something, right? And as women, we're all capable of sexual desire and images. There's, there's you know, our brains are the same as men's, mm -hmm. right? We have different hormones, but it's all the same. And so it's muscle memory. It takes a little bit of practice. So it's really great to go out and sample other fantasies and then see what inspires you. Yes. And whether it's written, I happen to like erotica, probably because that's where my fantasy life is rooted. But, you know, there are audio fantasy story material. There's um, now pornography, uh, such as what's produced by Erica Lust that is more for women. So yeah, there's a lot of places to get ideas for stories. And then you hold that in your mind. Um, and then you can recreate that and replay that when you're self-pleasuring. And then your mind and your body are in alignment. I was just going to say that. When we can touch our bodies and we can have a thought, it keeps us in the moment. Mm -hmm. It keeps us 
following pleasure and following the good feelings and the sensations. And that's always a good thing. <laughs>